And welcome back, gamers. Uh, I am Draxanusum, and we are here playing uh, Dwarf Fortress again. Uh, this is the Lazy New Pack, the second episode. So here we will be talking about basically uh, how to get uh, a lot of the commands um, to get your fortress set up and a lot of... Uh, basically general sort of things. So uh, this is what you'll see when you for after you uh, select embark on your previous screen. Um, this is basically the general viewer. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see just because stuff is so small but will uh, affect that a little bit. Here are all of the commands. These are all the keyboard commands and this is a sort of a general map of the area. You can definitely leave this open. Uh, F1, so if we move the cursor with the arrows uh, it'll obviously move us around and you can see the cursor here move and obviously all of this is changing. So if you ever want to go back, uh, go ahead and hit F1 and it'll jump you right back to where your uh, wagon is, which is this guy right here. You can kind of tell what's going on. There's a cat, uh, there's some dogs, that sort of thing. So uh, it sort of it uh, makes pretty general sense, and all of these squares are a little bit different. Um, these are not trees, these are up ramps, um, and you can go move up and down levels by holding shift and it comma for up and period for down. So that's basically the greater than and less than signs. So hold shift and hit those, and it'll switch your views. So this is up, up, up down 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 all right so uh, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this sort of view so we're going to go ahead and collapse this side you can definitely keep it open if it helps you keep your reference point and see where you are like oh I'm over here now uh, so uh, we are going to hit tab twice and that will move this guy over here uh, this is a river these are some ponds and obviously you can tell trees and bushes and that sort of thing so there are three modes to view things. So there's K, which is a general view mode. Um, so as you can see, we've got a bunch of clay walls here. Uh, the cursor will show you where you're at. Um, upward slope. Uh, and this is a cat. And this is some grass. And then a tr uh, that's a miner. And that's a maple tree and a shrub and all sorts of stuff like that. So you can kind of see what's going on. It's not too complex. And over here is some water. Uh, and that sort of thing. And over here is a waterfall. So as you can see, it sort of drops. And this basically tells you the level of that water in that square. Seven is the max. Um, so as you can see, the uh, water sort of tapers and then goes down. So the next uh, view mode is V. Um, that will basic. That's basically character and creature view. Um, so you can hit V and kind of scroll around. So here's a dog. If you want to see the next one, you can hit V again. And it'll go to the next person. So this is our expedition leader. Um, you can follow them. There are some commands. C, this basically excludes what's on this list. B is labor. And M is just miscellaneous, like judge of intent and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so we have a stray horse. So that's basically view. Remember, view is character. K is general, like just viewing. So here's a miner. Here's a cat. That sort of thing if you don't want to know anything other than what you're looking at. Q is basically um, the viewer for anything, any structure or anything you hit that you build, which is uh, will be in your B menu. You, but that'll be a little bit later. So as you can see, we can sort of give commands like remove and that sort of thing. So one thing we're going to want to do right away is set uh, your administrators. And that is over here. You can see nobles and administrators. That's this guy right here. So hit N and it'll basically tell you that everything is vacant. Uh, which usually isn't too bad of a problem except for when you want to start queuing up builds. So go ahead and so remember in when we were setting up our dwarves, we wanted uh, uh, our expedition leader to have all sorts of skills. So this is where that comes into play. So uh, go ahead and you can scroll through this menu with the up and down arrows. I'm telling you that because uh, it's not always the same. Uh, and you can see the uh, commands basically here. Um, so go ahead and find manager and hit enter. And you can still scroll with the up and, down, uh, up and down keys and find your expedition leader. It'll tell you over here uh, what relevant skill uh, they have. So as you can see, like I said before, organizer is what uh, defines that. So go ahead and fill them in there. Uh, we also want them as uh, the broker because you can see it's given us those as the relevant skills. And then the bookkeeper. And as you can see, that is another skill. So uh, we basically set all of those uh, properly for him. And the only other thing you need to set right now is the chief medical dwarf. And we have that right over here at doctor. And diagnostician, just like I said, is what is viewed as his 
primary skill, so go ahead and hit enter, and that's all you'll really need to do about that. Military commander, militia commander, you don't have to worry until you start getting migrants. Sheriff, you don't have to worry about until about the same time, like when you actually get someone with military skills. And, and you never, ever, ever want to uh, assign a hammer, because that's basically like a vigilante sheriff. He basically carries around a hammer. It used to be they forced the hammer on you, and it was some, like, godly, like, mace dwarf with uh, some expensive, like, god mode hammer, and as soon as someone broke the law, he'd basically walk over and smash him with a hammer. The only problem with that is, dwarves die when you smash them with a hammer, so you would basically get dwarf soup and not much else. So, uh, I would, uh, basically, now it's the same sort of thing, um, except... Uh, they don't come with all the fancy abilities and equipment. They'll still do it. Like, they'll grab a hammer and smash someone with it, but they'll just be so bad that they'll probably just, like, break a leg or miss or something. So it's something to be concerned about. I would not uh, ever assign that. Let's go ahead and hit Escape, and it will kick you back out to the main menu. Um, so the next sort of thing is we're going to teach you a few general commands. So a lot of what you'll be doing is in designations and also build. So D for designations and B for building. So you can sort of navigate with the arrow keys and that sort of thing. Um, again, I'm telling you this because it's not always that way. So go ahead and hit D. And then, as you can see, so D in designation has all sorts of options like mine, channel, blah, 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 blah. So uh, what you're going to want to do is chop trees because you're going to want to uh, start getting wood as early as possible because you'll go through a lot of it very quickly. So to chop down trees, you have this selected. So find a corner, find a, a spot you want to start with. doesn't necessarily have to be on top of a tree, but it can. Um, so go ahead and uh, find a spot after you hit T. You can tell it's highlighted because obviously it's a little bit whiter and tells you the command over here. So go ahead and hit enter and you'll see this flashing. So then make basically go to the opposite. So it's basically a box. You're making a box. So right now the box is this two by two. So now it's three by three. So you're basically selecting the opposite corner of a box to make a square and you're selecting everything in that box. So if I select here, it'll highlight everything, all of the trees within this box. So if we hit enter, you can see that those are all now highlighted to be chopped down. But we want more than that. So we're gonna keep highlighting stuff. I'm not a whole ton because we're gonna want them to do something else. Uh, so, you know, get some highlighting going. That should keep us for a while. And the other thing we're going to want to do is start digging immediately. Um, we basically want uh, somewhere to live, so we're going to have to do that. So, uh, one second, let me look at something in here. This is all clay, huh? Oh, that sucks. I hope it doesn't go too deep. Fire clay. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Limonite. I think that's good. The uh, stones sort of uh, have the same sort of properties in this game as they do in the real world. Like, they'll be grouped together. Uh, it's all very... The people who put this game together are basically like mathematicians and nerds. So they uh, have a high, like, fidelity to that sort of thing. What is that? Oh, that's nothing. Okay, so... Uh, hit D if you happen to hit escape to look around like I did and hit K and we're looking at stuff. So go ahead and hit escape. You'll come back out to the main menu. Uh, whenever you want to go into a new menu, you'll have to jump back out here. So just keep hitting escape until it either hits you to this menu and then just hit escape one more time and it'll bring you out back out here. So we're going to hit D for uh, designations and we're going to hit D again for mining. And then uh, it's basically the same as the trees. You're going to want to draw a box. So uh, I sort of pick a flat face of uh, a mountain um, because that is what you always have to like dig out of unless you don't, and I'll show you that. So we'll do. I'll show you how to dig out uh, a place for your fortress in the first place. So uh, we're gonna pick somewhere close to the. Uh, actually, I might want to go over there. Can we go over there? It's always a question if you can actually cross a brook or not or like any moving water let's go let's uh, 
let's access this mountain on this side. So uh, basically, so start drawing a box. We're going to start right here, and you can see this little square flashing. So make a three. Uh, at, uh, I always recommend that your hallways be at least three wide, and there's a reason for that. It's basically because wagons are three wide, and they can only move through spaces that are three wide, and you're going to want your trade depot on the inside. So go ahead and make a sort of like hallway, and as you can see, I drew a box. The starting was here, and I selected, I hit enter again over here, and it created this box. So they're going to mine this out. And then, uh, because there's not a ton of space here, we're going to then make it turn, and we'll have it go this way. So I am going to hit escape, and all of these dwarves are going to go to work. Uh, hit, uh, it says it's paused up here, so we're going to hit space again, and you can see these dwarves are going to work mining this out. This dwarf is up here chopping down trees, and this dwarf is fishing. You can see he's already caught quite a bit. So if you didn't happen to be lucky enough to start with... Um, uh, a mountain to carve into, uh, you're going to have to do something a little bit different. And that is, you're going to have to create a ramp, or uh, in your case, it'll be a ramp. Uh, so basically, you uh, are going to have to do a channel. So you hit D, and the channel will be your H option, which is right here. So basically, channeling digs out uh, to one square below where you'll be. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do an example uh, just so you can see. So uh, ramps and stairs have to follow a similar principle. So as you can see, we have uh, these up where uh, it's basically like the mountain is sloping up. So as you can see, it's like a mudstone upward slope. And if we go up a level, there's a downward slope. So everything, ramps and stairs included, have to have a like a bottom level upward and a top level downward. So basically, like... These are all downward slopes. This downward slope, this corner right here, has to meet with another one down here. Otherwise, these two uh, levels are not connected. And the same is true of stairs. So if you see, if you hit D, you can create an upward stairway, a downward stairway, or an up-down stairway. Uh, so a down stairway uh, on the level that you're start. If you're going down. Uh, you have to start with a downward stairway, and then when you create that downward stairway, you have to make an upward stairway to meet it. So basically, like, you're combining those two levels of stairs so they can meet. An up-down stairway is basically if you're having a, a planning on having at least three levels where there will be a top, a middle, and a bottom. The up-down stairway would basically be what you want to use for the middle level, where you can still access the stuff below, and you can still access the stuff above. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, but I'll show you here in a minute, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. We've got mudstone here, so that's not the best, but we'll we'll live with it. So we're going to keep expanding this out to right here, and then uh, on this... Uh, portion here we're going to channel down which is if you didn't have this mountain it'll basic this when i get started right here it'll give you the idea of what you're supposed to do right off the bat and that will be hit d and you will have the option to channel so go ahead and hit h and then select the area that you want to channel and as you can see now we have these stairways or these slopes and it, uh, it automatically connects these um, but we'll do a stairs here in a little bit, and we'll show you what you have to do for those. And as you can see, we're here now at Quartzite. Um, so if you're going to want to create a sort of, like, with a slope, you can only basically go one way. Like, you can't have a slope and then have it go this way, because it's sort of at an angle. I'll draw it with my mouse, because you're sloping this way. It's kind of hard to be coming along this way and then have a slope that goes down that way because then this area would collapse. So uh, so we can only go out one way from here, so we're going to do that. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to dig out the three hallway, like I said. And then we're going to do our stairs. So uh, my this is basically just I'm showing you you don't necessarily have to do your fortress like this. But if you want, that's also an option. So I've dug out this sort of like 5x5 uh, five five area. Is it 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. Okay. So and then in the 3x3 uh, three three area, you're going to do a downward stairway. 
I'm actually going to do an up-down stairway in this case. And then you'll make a box in the middle and you uh, clear out the center. And then you basically have a hub sort of like this where you can have hallways that branch off into all directions. So if you want to select, let's see, can you actually, no. But I don't want to actually do all that. So I'm going to, uh, I sort of, what I do is I basically plan things out and then uh, to remove designations. Uh, once something is hollowed out, you basically can't unhollow it unless you build a wall there. And if you want, I guess you could build layers of walls, but that would be weird. Um, but if you want to remove something that you've already designated, go ahead and go into the D menu and then hit X to remove designation. And then basically do the same thing where you uh, select a box. And as you can see, I cut out that area so it is no longer accessed for, it is no longer designated to be mined. So they'll mine all this other stuff, um, but they'll basically avoid, they won't ever get over here because these two points aren't connected. They're never going to be like, well, there's stuff over here, so I'll just mine it out. No, the, this, since this is isolated, it will forever be isolated until I reconnect it somehow. So I am going to make a few plans here. One, two, three, four, five. That will basically be just to remind me for a trade depot. Um. As you can see, they're still mining, and we're still chopping down trees, and they've created little piles of logs. Um, this will be important in a little bit. Um, they will always create those, and unless you want, uh, unless you want them to always bring it in after you've chopped it down to where they're going directly, you'll want to make a stockpile. So we'll try and get on that as quickly as possible. Here we are, still mining. So I over here, I'm going to basically create the idea for what we want to do. Um, for the stairs. So we are going to create an upward stairway uh, because we want to connect to the level above us. So we're going to hit uh, in the D menu. So go ahead and hit D and then upward stairways here. So we're going to hit U. Uh, again, it'll be the box highlighting. So uh, here we go and we've created these three upward stairways. Since I also want a downward stairway, uh, I will go into uh, the next level up and then uh, you'll want to connect it with a downward stairway, which is J. And then you want to make sure that they are all connected. So we're starting on the bottom of the three, and then we'll go like that, and those will be the meeting downward stairway. So as you can see, they sort of connect like that. And as you can see, these stairways are being completed as they're mining them out. You can also uh, mine out or uh, create your stairways out of actual um, materials, um, but since you're mine, you have to mine stuff out anyway just to live. You may as well just have it mined out rather than built. Still chopping down trees, which is good. We're gonna connect it here, and then we will hopefully. Hopefully we've caught um, some soil on this because we need to talk about that as well. Because basically, uh, see, cat adopted someone, so now we can't slaughter that cat. So uh, if cats keep breeding, it becomes a problem. So hopefully, hopefully. So the reason I didn't dig over here directly is you always have to think about people who can get into your fortress, either goblins or... Uh, any sort of nefarious creature. See, and he'll dig those, so he creates those. Uh, he can't do that for everything, so just be aware of that. Mudstone, can I build on you? No, okay, so we do need soil. So, uh, when you're actually planning out for your, um, your farms, you need soil. You either need sand, you either uh, you can use clay, or you can use loam. 
any of those three you can um, plant on directly. And I might actually abandon that and try this other way because I think there will be a little bit more space over here. Because I'm guessing it's like... Phew. Oh, nope. Hitting it right now. Ugh. See, we're trying to be quick because if you take too long the seasons and the weather catches up with you and then doors get upset. So we'll sort of dig something out kind of like that. And then we'll dig something out kind of like this. No mudstone, no mudstone. Excellent. Okay, so the next important thing that you're going to want to do is to build a farm plot because uh, uh, obviously dwarves need food and the more they're sitting around, um, they're going to be eating your food. So like I said, um, there's definitely some irrigation stuff you can do where you, because uh, basically mud needs to be present and to do that you need at least water to have touched it at one time. But to get around this, you can use... Uh, soil and in this case ours will be clay so uh we are going to go ahead and build our first building which is farm plots uh and that will actually be in the build menu and if you recall that menu is b and it has all of these sort of listings and you can scroll through them with your cursor with plus and minus over on your number pad and it'll basically go through uh and show you all the stuff and in this case we know exactly what we're looking for it'll be farm plot this guy right here so you can either scroll to it and hit enter or you can hit p and it, as you can see, if we're over here on the mudstone, uh, it's telling you we need soil or mud. So we're kind of stuck. But since I looked for this stuff in the beginning, the clay, uh, we don't necessarily need any of that. So kind of like when we were selecting uh, a place to found the fortress, U and M are basically up and down. So if I want to make this selector bigger, I'll go ahead and hit U. Every one press of U ba makes it one bigger. Uh, M will shrink it, and then K and H are basically the same thing. So K will make it bigger that way, uh, H will make it uh, smaller. So we're going to go with a 4x4 because that's a good shape, and we're going to hit yes. So we've basically placed it there, so that will be count as one field. So our farming dwarf should figure out that he's got a job now. So he here he is running in. Here he is walking over to this farm, so now he's going to put it together. Oh, and there he finished. So if you remember when I said uh, there were three different kinds of selectors, this is where we'll use one of them. So to view what we want this farm to be doing, we have to hit Q. And Q will basically bring us to this menu over here. So over here, up in this area, in the top right of the screen but on the top left of the actual like information screen it'll tell you what each of the farm types are down here it'll tell you uh, you can leave it fallow you can fertilize it you can seasonally fertilize something and this is what uh, season we're selected on so we're currently in spring so it's asking okay what do you want to grow in spring so you can uh, highlight you can only you can't use your mouse at all and for the most part that's true you can't use your mouse for anything minus a few selections but pretty much assume you can't use your mouse so in the plus and minus you have to go over uh, you find what you're looking for as I said in the beginning you're gonna want to do plump helmets all the time because they're actual food source they can be for booze they do everything they're wonderful so go ahead and hit b to go to summer which is what's what's denoted here and then go ahead and find uh, um plump helmets again c one more time do the same thing and d plump helmets again so now this farmer is going to get to work and he is going to do nothing but plant in this field. But we've got a few more ideas that we want for this guy. So we're going to go ahead and build a workshop. So go ahead and hit B and then W for workshop. And then workshops will all be listed over here and uh, basically their corresponding commands to build. In this case, we want a farmer's workshop, which is W. And then we're going to find a place to put it, which will be right here. And then uh, when you actually make that selection, uh, you can't resize these at all. These will be in a specific sort of selection. Uh, it'll give you this menu of what do you want to build this workshop out of. So these are all of the materials we have available. So all these logs we cut down, 
um, all of these stone types, and then over here is uh, how many of them we have, and this is the distance to the actual work site. So you scroll through this menu with plus and minus, and you basic and you can also hit view to view the item if you want to know about it, like how much it's worth, uh, and that's and you can get a description. This is a chestnut log, very interesting. So we are going to go ahead and build this out of uh, mudstone. Why not? So they are going to go ahead and uh, uh, the. The type of workshop it is uh, requires that the person who would work it be the person who built it. So the farmer is going to be the person in charge of building this, and it needs to be finished off by the architect, which is why we basically included that as a thing. So we're also going to create a stockpile. Uh, so go ahead and hit P uh, in the main menu. Uh, stockpile is right here. So go ahead and hit P and it'll list all of these sort of stockpile types. And then you're gonna have to make another selection from there. So in this case, we're going to want a type of food stockpile. So hit F and nothing else will change here, but you're uh, going to have to select where you wanna put it. And we're gonna wanna put it around this farmer's workshop just because it will be near where all of our farms are and it's close to the workshop, which is ideal. So go ahead and uh, create a box, just like if you were mining something out or cutting down trees. Uh, we're gonna create it just around this uh, workshop here. And as you can see, it kinda got these little uh, hard to see hash marks. So if you go ahead and hit escape, uh, we're now back out in the main menu and we kind of want to tweak this stockpile a little bit because we don't want all of our food going there. We just want seeds because seeds are what's going to be important for both that farmer's workshop and the farm. So go ahead and hit Q um, because it technically now counts as a build and we want to view and give it commands. So uh, find where you uh, put your stockpile. It'll, tell, it'll show you what you're uh, selecting with that, these highlighting flashes and it, then we're going to want to go to settings. So go ahead and hit S, and then in this menu, uh, we basically use the arrow keys on this side, and then we can go and select uh, things this way, or we can use the commands here. Uh, obviously for this, uh, actually we'll need both in this case. <clears throat> so go to your food, because that's what this is a stockpile of. But as you recall, we don't want all of this, so we're going to hit B to block all, and as you can see, everything went dark. So go ahead and go to seeds, and then go to P to permit seeds. If you want, uh, you can hit over again one more time and you can uh, re restrict or allow specific seeds. But since we want all of them, we're just gonna say permit seeds, nothing else. So now, all of our dwarves, as you can see, we've got five idlers right now. There's plenty of seeds over here to be had though. So we're gonna hit space and all of those become busy because they're going to go uh, and deposit seeds right over here. I'm actually, uh, this needs to be expanded a little bit, but that can wait because we've got other things to do. So I am going to connect this construction here and we're gonna expand it out a little bit. And then I'm going to make room for crafting areas. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. Uh, that's probably gigantic. One, two, three, space, one, two, three, space, one, two, three. Uh, Let's cut off one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. One, two, three, space, one, two, three, space, one, two, three, space. So, and then we'll cut off. Uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, oh, that's fine. Kind of gigantic, but it'll be okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then over as many. Oh, that doesn't look right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One too big. There we go. That looks better. And actually, we are going to wait on this one. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build uh, crafting sectors. So this is going to be everything. This is going to be our wood stockpile and all the workshops in here will be anything that uses wood. So uh, boyers. Oh, 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 stop. I don't want you to go all the way down there. You've got better things to do. So all of the boyer stuff, um, all that kind of thing. That's all going to be down there. 
And I'm also going to expand this in a little bit um, because I'm going to want the food and the uh, housing to be on this level just because we're going to direct connect it here and it'll go straight down uh, to the uh, straight down to where we prep food. So as you can see, there's this weird purple thing here, and it's a dead rat. So this is what the cat's doing, and it's what you want, but it's kind of annoying because it's killing stuff and it's dropping them places. And we don't necessarily have anywhere to dump them yet, but we definitely don't want a bunch of dead crap laying around because it stinks up the place and makes dwarves grossed out and all that good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean bad stuff. So we are going to create a dump. So go ahead and hit I for stock or uh, zones, rather. Uh, let's see, where are we at? I for zones. So then uh, go ahead and highlight a zone. Uh, it's basically the same. Create a box. We don't necessarily need something gigantic, but we need something. Actually, I'm, I want it to be somewhere else. Go ahead and hit I, uh, and then create a box. And we want this to be our garbage dump. So we'll go ahead and hit G, and that will tell this that everything that's garbage goes in this square here. We'll either dump it in this little puddle, or we'll stack it up and that sort of thing. So there's something else we have to do. Because we have creatures that we brought along with us, uh, we also have to put them in a pasture. Otherwise, they basically starve themselves and then they die. And that sucks, because we don't want them to starve and die. Uh, we want them to be around so we can eat them and that sort of thing. So. Uh, as soon as we chop down these trees, we'll have a place for a pasture, and that will be another zone. And uh, uh, the reason why we're cutting down trees is because uh, they can actually create little, like, pits in our zoning. And I don't necessarily want that because it's ugly and I am OCD. Oh, so it looks like we've got gems here. Uh, milk quartz. Very nice, very nice. And orthoclase, which is kind of common, but that's okay. We will let them keep chopping down trees, probably when they get to right that tree. It'll be good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to create a pasture, so go ahead and hit I, and then find a place that's relatively free of trees. Uh, something about here, I would say. And as you can see, there is... Uh, where are we at? Now I can see it. There it is, pen and pasture. So go ahead and hit N, and then it'll say set pasture information. And then, so it's shift N. And it'll basically tell you all of the creatures you have. So in this case, uh, the two stray horses are what's going to be in a pasture. Uh, so we're, uh, uh, we're going to include them as well. Um, because they will starve, even though they're out roaming in the woods and that sort of thing without being in a pasture, they won't eat. And then they'll starve to death and die. And that sucks because we want uh, those horses to make more horses so we can put them to work and eat them and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So they're still working on that. So, uh, so remember this dead rat that we created that garbage dump for? Go ahead and hit K for the viewer. Uh, find the purple dead whatever. Sometimes it's bugs, sometimes it's rats, it's something gross. So go ahead and find it, select it and hit D. And that will basically select it to be dumped. So as you can see, our dwarf ran off with it. And he dumped it over here in this garbage. And it happened to fall down in the puddle. He just chucked a dead rat in the puddle. So, gross. But whatever. And as you can see, we have our horses out here in this pasture. Uh, I want... Let's see. It's a female horse. And that's a female horse. Crap. I was hoping we'd get mixed gender horses, but we didn't. So that sucks. Every uh, time you embark, you'll get two uh, larger creatures. They won't necessarily be the same type of creature, like you might get a water buffalo and a horse, or a camel, or a llama, basically any like beast of burden. And they won't be, they'll, they'll basically be random what kind of creature you get and what their genders are. So if we would have been lucky, we would have got one of each gender and of the same, but obviously that's kind of rough. So uh, we just finished. Uh, we just dug out the last piece of our uh, crafting area. So we're gonna go ahead and start that. Um, so go ahead and hit B for build and W for workshop. So now we're going to do everything that's made out of wood. So of course, uh, that will be a carpenter's workshop. Go ahead and find a corner. Uh, so we're gonna want a couple of those because obviously we're going to do a lot of carpentry. 
So there are some other things um, that are done in uh, wooded areas or with wood. And one of those is uh, Boyer's Workshop. Go, so go ahead and hit B in this case and go ahead and plant that somewhere. And a few other things we're going to want are Kraftdorf workshops. So that will be uh, R. Uh, as a note, Kraftdorf workshops are also uh, also use stone to create things. So um, it's not hugely important, but it's definitely something to note. And we're not we're we'll keep it at. Um, No. Uh, one thing to note is every most almost every workshop is a three by three square, and you can't uh, you can't have a corner access. D despite the fact that dwarves move diagonally, they cannot access a workshop diagonally. So uh, I have this three by three craft dwarf workshop. So if I created another workshop like here and then here, that would render this workshop useless. So be sure to be mindful of your spacing. If I wanted, I could definitely just line the wall and just have the, their tops be the object facing. Or if I wanted, I could also have like this just one access and then they can always get in. But uh, just make sure that you have an open side and not just a corner because that will render workshops useless. So I will, uh, I think that's good. I don't necessarily think I want anything else in there. Uh, Boyer, maybe another, eh, let's do another Carpenters, why not? We got space. So we'll go ahead and throw that right there. And those will all get built, but I want to add something special just to keep uh, these guys not having to travel far and it'll keep idle dwarves busy. So we're going to go ahead and make another stockpile. So go ahead and hit P. And this one is very specific and it keeps, it gets just what we want and that's wood. So go ahead and hit W and then make the box in that entire room. You don't necessarily need to make rooms like I do or do it like I do, but it's just a suggestion. So now uh, all of the idle dwarves will bring all that wood we chopped from out here and they'll uh, stack it all down here. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the video. We're already at 36 minutes or so, so I'm going to just uh, include this last piece. Um, and then we'll bring it up again in the next video. Um, but to get things crafting, like beds, um, cabinets, chairs, tables, all that sort of thing, you actually have to either uh, hit Q when these workshops are built and uh, tell them specifically what you want to build, or you have to go into the job manager. And for the job manager, you hit J, and it'll tell you every job that's currently active in your uh, fortress, either suspended, inactive, or currently being worked on, and that tells you everything here. Um, then you want to go to the manager, which is M, and here in the manager is what uh, the uh, nobleman's area of work is, that manager job. Uh, so we're going to want to hit Q, and it, that'll be a new order. And you can type in anything you want here, and it'll bring things up. So I can type in bed. And I want 30 beds, which is the maximum amount of things you can order. Uh, I actually don't want 30 beds now that I think about it. I want like 10 bed. So the minimum you can have is 1, and the maximum you can have is 30. So, like, if I want uh, crystal glass coffins, uh, and I'm like, oh, crap, I don't want that. That's uh, That takes stuff I don't have. I can't say 0. If I say 0, it'll just process it as 1. And then you'll have to uh, scroll through to it, which is the, you use with your arrow keys, and then hit R. So something else we're going to want is uh, rock crafts, because we're going to want to start thinking about um, selling things to other people. So we're going to want rock crafts and rock instruments just because we want to get those started. And that will be done here at the Craft Dwarf Workshop. But remember, so the job manager is JMQ. All you really need to know is that combination. Or just JM, and that'll get you here to the work orders, and then you can figure out what you want to do. So if I wanted, if I'm like, crap, I really need those rock instruments, I can hit T, and that will increase it to the max priority. If I just want to move it up one at a time, I can hit P, and that will move it up. And it'll basically, you only ever have to worry about that if it's made in the same sort of workshop. 
All right, so I think we've covered a lot. I hope you have been able to follow along, leave a comment, that sort of thing. I definitely appreciate it, and I hope that uh, this video has been helpful. So this is the first in a series. I'm not quite sure how long it went. The other uh, video series went for 14 or so videos, but we'll see where we get to. So thank you for following along. Um, I hope you enjoy Door Fortress as much as I do, and uh, we'll see you here next time. Thanks for watching, gamers.